Hey everyone, welcome to The Breakdown. My name is Kurt. And this is John Gagne. <laughs> <laughs> That's Pastor John Gagne. How are you, buddy? Yeah, good, how you doing? Good. Have we ever done a solo breakdown with you and me? No, the, I did one or two, but it was always with at least three of us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then you usually yeah. do with Luke when I'm not around, but... Yeah, well, not usually. I mean, I... Maybe I've done one with Luke. Yeah. One. Yeah. Not okay. a, it's not a whole lot. Okay. I haven't done a ton, but I've done a couple of them. Yeah. It's great yeah. to have you here, man. Yeah, man. It's great to be here. Thanks. I am loving this. And I was uh, thinking through Sunday's message. I was not here. I'll you weren't even you. here. I know. I know. I was thinking about that and I was praying and I just kept seeing your face. So when oh, I was, wow. when I knew Luke was going to be out of town, I'll I said, I'm Jen. <laughs> <laughs> this is already, man, we're going to have a lot of fun today. This is going to be great. I love it already. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Hey man, it's good to have you back here yeah, and just get into Sunday's message and yeah. what God was doing. But for whatever reason, um, I did sense that you and I were supposed to dialogue right. about right. this message. Okay. I will say Luke is off on another missions trip. I don't know what God is forming inside of him, but this is a really cool season for Luke. He is over in Moldova with yeah. Pastor Wally. Yeah. So that's really cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I know that he he ha does have a very missional heart. Mm. So and uh, so this is probably fulfilling a lot of things in him that he really um, likes to press into on a personal level, which is great. You know, so it's good. It's gonna it's gonna be great. It is really awesome. Yeah. So Luke, we'll see you when you get back. See you when you get back. And on Sunday, you know, you and I were dialoguing the other day and you turned to me and you said, hey, did you listen to Pastor Zach's message? And I yeah. said, no, I couldn't even believe. Again, what, what Luke and I are always dialoguing about on the breakdown is we, we see this, this seamless transition. There's like this constant thread with the Holy Spirit, even from the word that Vanessa had, the vision that the Lord yeah. gave her yeah. to Pastor Zach's message to what's going on behind the scenes in prayer. Oh, dude. And I can't even... And my wife always laughs. Kim's always laughing at me because I'm like, you can't believe it. Like I, I still, every Sunday I leave the prayer room, we go through worship, two services, two sermons, all this stuff happening at the altar or not or whatever, other words that people bring. And every Sunday at the end of the second service, I am completely amazed mm. with with what the Lord is doing, how the Holy Spirit brings people into a place as we're as we're praying. He brings us to a place where we begin to pray out what we actually see manifest throughout the service. It really is phenomenal. And so even just uh Again, sometimes even Pastor Zach's message, like I never ask him ahead of time, hey, what are you preaching on this week? I don't even want to know. Yeah. And there's some times where I actually pray out a prayer and there's been moments where some of the main thrusts or points of my prayer end up being the points of his message. It oh, like really man. blows your mind. It <laughs> blows your mind. So it's, a, it's awesome. And so, yeah, again, this was another one of those days where it was like that. So it was great. It was great. What's amazing too, is that I got to experience when you were, you and I were talking yesterday, I got to experience being over at pastor Matt McIntosh's church, Warwick Hope assembly of God. Yeah. And it was great to be back in that area where I used to live, yeah. but also to know as I was seeking the Lord for a word, it was right in line yeah. with what God is saying. Saying, which yeah. is this is the whole point yeah he is talking to his bride right now if we're paying attention if we're listening and this is part of what pastor zach was saying in the message is we really have to be discerning how is it that we're not paying attention to the times and to the seasons because he's always speaking yeah it's a really important thing and and just and for those of you that listen to the breakdown here's a little spoiler alert i'm actually preaching on sunday all right and um and i wrote my message a week ago for next Sunday and before Pastor Zach even preached this message. Mm. And it's going to feel almost for some people, it might seem upfront that it's contradictory. It actually is complimentary. And I'll explain why even as I go to preach the message, but okay. it really is phenomenal how it even lined up. Again, I don't ask ever ask him what he's preaching on. And I just thought it was so interesting that um, the message that he brought in some of the points, mm -hmm. and we're going to get into talking about this, some of the points that he made. And I'm sitting in my seat and I'm like, I can't even believe he's saying this. Some of it is even language that he brought out in the message that, that are 
the same language was used at some points in my message, but from a different point of view. Yeah. But it's very similar language and words that he used. Some phrases that he used are actual points in my message, but from a different point of view. So it's really interesting how he, that happened. Well, like you said, you know, this is really good. You're bringing this up. I actually want to park there for a few moments, okay. even before we get into your message on Sunday. This idea well, of- Not my message on Sunday. No, I know. Pastor Zach's message I know, Sunday. before we even get to you. <laughs> so before yeah. we get to you this upcoming yeah, Sunday- yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I want to say before you start sharing from the pulpit, help us understand this concept. You, sometimes you read Paul's writings and you're like, wait a minute, isn't that contradictory? You can mm -hmm. read and mirror them and look at other things. And I love what you're bringing up here is it's complementary. Yeah. You know, and this is part of the fivefold gifting mm -hmm. is that we're able to see different angles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the, the Lord. And so I personally believe that every prophetic word um, now it, it can it can be a little hard to see it when it's like a personal prophecy. Okay. But when I'm talking about like a, a every prophetic word, like for a nation or for mm. a church, you know, like I brought that word from Habakkuk a yes. few months ago, yes. right? There, there are multiple things happening. So you, we prophesy in part. So you give a prophetic word from one place. Yes. And, you know, and it could just be like, um, the word could be, Oh, Ron Eaton, um, um, a month, a year ago, a year ago last week, gave a word to our church about a spirit of humility. Yes. And then a few months later, Jackie Santos brought a prophetic word to our prophetic team that said what the Lord wants to do in our church and in our leadership and where he's taking us is not bringing us to a place of humility, but to, to a place of glory. Mm. or to a high place, yeah. which then was reiterated with Scott Axman like six months later. And a lot of people had never even heard Jackie's word. Right. And then Scott came and basically preached her word that she gave mm. to our leadership at the beginning of the year. And, and it's not that one contradicts the other. It's that the, the going to the high place actually is rooted or the foundation of it is from a place of humility. Yeah. So it's two sides of the same coin. It's that the world sees like, I need to go take the high place. I need to go up, reach up high and take the high place. But in the kingdom, it's upside down. We don't go up to take the high place. We actually go low mm. and the Lord brings us to the high place. The, the In the kingdom, going low is going high. And we see this in the life of Jesus over and over and over again. So it seems contradictory, but it's actually two sides of the same coin. And in order to go up, you must go down. And so it gives you the two sides of the coin. And even in a prophetic word, you could just be like, oh, um, and we see it through scripture. We see it in uh, and like all of like the Isaiah's and Jeremiah's. And I think um, this past Sunday, I believe Pastor Zach actually might have even mentioned this, how these prophetic words, even though they were thousands of years ago, there was something um, that pertained to the moment, but there's also something that pertained to the future. Yes. And so for even for us, it's like it's a present future tense yes. in all of these prophetic words. And at times, even now where we sit, there's like a past present future tense mm -hmm. that we have to read these in That's is good. that this is something that happened to and for and with God's people yeah. 3,500 years ago. And then also was fulfilled in Jesus 2000 years ago is, and is being fulfilled in us today and will be fulfilled through the third, our third generation in 80 years from now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you have to always look in prophecy. Um, you see it in 2d, but we have to ask the Lord for the ability to see it in four dimensions where it almost like you take something flat on the paper and it's like an accordion, you pull it out and you can actually see it through time and see how it is. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And all prophetic words have to be viewed in that. And the book of revelation, is a perfect example yes, of that. Yes. You read through the book of Revelation and there's some prophetic words that as you read them, like they will overcome. They overcame by the blood of the lamb and mm. by the word of their testimony. Even the word overcame is c conjugated or translated as you have overcome, you are overcoming and you will overcome. Yes. As that word used overcame is actually translated as all three tenses. Mm. And so it was true then, it is true now, and it will be true. 
You know, and so it's like you see that and you, when you go through Revelation, the whole book is that way. It's like you have to pull it out into this like four dimensional accordion type of mindset and say, so I need to see all the layers here. And so um, and so that's yeah. Well, what I like about what you're saying is that it requires some study. This, this is what's really important. When you find something that seems contradictory, you you may be looking at something that's actually compliment, complimentary. Mm. Like you said, yeah. we live in a world of either or, and a lot of times it's a bull yeah. band. There's yeah. two sides to a coin we're not actually paying attention mm-hmm. to. So I love that because you're encouraging us to actually go back and study out if something appears to be a contradiction, mm-hmm. what's actually going on here? Yeah. You know, and then of course that prophetic word having a transcendent meaning. Yeah. Like I love that was one of the things I really wanted to dialogue with you yeah. about. Yeah. Because Pastor Jack is teaching mm-hmm. it. And I'm like, oh, this is so good. Mm-hmm. It's exactly where it's at. Yeah. So before we dive into Pastor's message from Sunday. <laughs> yep. We had a couple things happen, of course, uh, just going into the weekend, what happened to Israel oh, yeah. and and where we've been praying. We're now days into our prayer and intercession. We've gone past our prayer night, just a lot of amazing stuff happening um, that we're, we're watching Pastor Zach's message aligning perfectly. Um, and then even this word where Vanessa comes up and shares a word on the harvest. Um, it's just really kind of amazing to see how God is weaving everything together before we even get started. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it even, um, Kim asked me about that. She said, um, did you really feel like Vanessa's word was in line with the way we were praying all morning for Israel? And I said, it was perfectly yeah, in line. Yeah. And she says, how so? I said, because this was, um, I saw this when she ex- was explaining to me this, the father's heart for the lost. Yeah. I, as she's talking to me about it, it's like I could hear between her breath, yes. her breaths, the father's heart yearning for his people. Yes. And like, and, and it just, it was like, I could hear like mm. the father's breath on it going like, yes, for the lost and for my people yes. that have strayed. Yes. Like these are my sons and daughters and they have strayed and like my covenant, my promises are still yes. And amen through Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. And, and here they are longing and striving to, to take to take part of the covenant that God has made with his people. And there's so much deception and there's so much politics and all this other stuff surrounding it and influence from the world. It's like, they've like lost their way. They're like the prodigal sons and in second service. I know we were, I think we were singing, um, that song, uh, one of the, uh, one of the songs we're singing anyway, I can't remember which one it was, maybe house of miracles or something. And, um, you know, or don't you, uh, I know that he can do it anyway. I've seen, um, uh, marriages reunited. Yes, 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 home. Yep. I don't even know if we sang that one on Sunday. I know we sang it last night at prayer, but I'm like, we're praying and we're going, yes, like my brother or my sister or my son or my daughter are coming home. And it's like, but I'm like, as we last mm. night's focus was Israel. And I'm thinking like, they are the prodigal yes. sons and daughters. Yes. Like, and the Lord is like anxiously, like pacing the front oh. porch, waiting for them to come over the hill, yes. you know, and, and to have a revelation of Yeshua as like the, the fulfillment, the embodiment of his covenant for them, you know? And like, I just hear like the father's heart yearning for that. So when Vanessa was like sharing with me, like pastor Zach said, uh, he thinks that I should share this to the body. And she goes, I, I want to share it with you yeah. to see when you think it would be a good time. She's sharing it with me. And I'm like, let's just do it now oh, because it like, to me, I felt like it complimented yes. the the father's heart um for his people. And we were praying into that all morning, you know. So it's so good. And you know what what people may not know unless they've heard from you in the past eight months is that you have had a a kind of a word and a picture. God's been speaking to you about Israel mm-hmm. early on this year. Yeah. This has been coming to you. Yeah. And here we are right now. I know. It's it's just really amazing. I brought that up at prayer last night. Okay. I know Jen was there. You weren't yeah. there. But um thanks for saying yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just I felt the Lord and and the thing is is it is it has been kind of wired into my spiritual DNA, mm. a love for Israel. Uh, from mo- from multiple different places and experiences I've had, but I I felt this year a, a call back to that, um, and which which happened also subsequently, um, uh, there was a revival of a relationship of my first pastor when I was a child, yes. who is a messianic Jew. Wow! And like there's and it was just something on that. And I just felt like I kept I'm like man, we need to 
be prophesying and praying more into this with Israel yeah. and, and starting to sow into ministries that are effectively ministering to God's people. And so I've, it's been something heavy on my heart. And of course I teach the tabernacle at school of the spirit, which is like all like oh, old Testament revelation of Jesus up through to today and what it means to us. And it's so powerful. And it's like, man, if they would just see this, mm. this was, it was everything. It's like, it seems to me, I'm like, it was so obvious. How could you not see this? But I have the benefit of the Holy spirit That's illuminating right. it to me, That's right. you know? Um, and so I just, I think there's so much of that happening. And then again, yeah, now we're in a time where it's just like, yes, we we're partnering with what the Lord desires to do. And, um, and I, I just believe that it, it's only, there's things that are going to come out of this. There's stuff that's going to be birthed out of this. So. Absolutely. Well, that yeah. brings us right to this passage from Isaiah 2, yeah. that it's boiled down to two things, the heat and the hammer, mm -hmm. and a time of moving away where the mountain of God is exalted above all others. We're moving away from this war, this battle. Really interesting to kind of lean into that as I was watching Pastor Zach preach out this message. And interesting to pull back and say, okay, we've done a lot about and in spiritual warfare and being dressed for battle mm -hmm. and being in that place. And now the sense is like, okay, we're in harvest time. It's important to know what's going on. And we, we've yeah. been watching this pop up across, you know, the board with just our church, the way that things have shifted yeah. in the past year or so with yeah. the new evangelistic yeah. thrust that's being successful, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so just really amazing to kind of take the concept and even the imagery of, okay, yeah, I could take my sword and I could shove it into the ground and make, yeah. you know, a little bed there. To It'll get, work. And it work. Yeah. But no, it does require not just that beating and that force, but it's got to be submitted to the heat, which again, I always come right back to the Holy Spirit, unless this is why Jesus said in Acts chapter one, don't go anywhere until you receive power mm -hmm. from on high for then you will be my witnesses. Are we stealing? Are we... I, I, yep. keep, <laughs> keep, go keep, ahead. Keep going. No, no, no keep going. <laughs> no, and so and this is part of what even what I even sense the Lord communicating uh, through me at Warwick Hope on Sunday. How important it is. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. Yeah, um, I remember actually Pastor Zach preached out of the same passage like I don't know maybe nine years ago, um, eight eight nine years ago, and he used the analogy of the butter knife. How the butter knife, it's like, it's the, it's the most versatile tool we have in the whole house. <laughs> it's true. And he talked about using the butter knife to open a box. He talked yep. about using it to open a letter to, um, you know, screw something or unscrew something. And, <laughs> you know, it's like he, we use the butter knife as like the multi-tool, except that by its design and its name. It's used for one thing wow. for spreading butter, but we use it as this multi-tool. And he was using that as the, as the, as the picture of the sword, you know, and yeah. how like you start, you can use the sword for all these different things, but it's only designed for one thing, which is to cut in battle, you know? Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I just thought it was really, uh, I, I loved this message again, sitting, listening to this message, thinking about what I felt like the Lord put on my heart for um, this Sunday coming up and the timing of Zach, Pastor Zach bringing this message and me having my message, I thought it was really interesting. And the part about it that, um, I mean, it was so much about this message that I loved, um, but um, but the heat and the hammer um, were the, were the, of course, that was like two of his biggest main, his main point. One of his biggest main points was that it requires the heat and the hammer, um, which are the, the tools to turn the sword into the plow. Mm. And I thought that was really interesting. And I think that a part of what the Lord is, is trying to speak to us and, and it's like he's he's really trying to bring us through this transition. Yeah. Um. And what uh, what I believe part of the transition that he's trying to bring us through is shifting our mindset of warfare. Mm. It's actually a shift in how we approach warfare. Okay. And I think that for so many years, um, the church, especially the a Pentecostal church, especially in a church like ours, that we there is a very clear call and anointing for healing mm. specifically spiritual healing inner, yeah, healing inner healing with deliverance and yielding right and um and we we see this and it creates a um a a, a hypersensitivity mm. to spiritual warfare yes and our human condition our natural response to it is oh my, i'm going to give the devil a black eye 
I'm going to grab my sword and I'm going to chop his head off with it. Like it's, there's so much around that type of mindset. That's, yeah. that's actually wrong. Mm. And when we see Jesus approaching the devil or the devil approaching Jesus in the desert, yeah. you don't hear Jesus be like, you know what? Shut up. You're such a, you're such a dirty liar. You're such a, you're, you're horrible. You're less than me. Or you never hear yeah. Jesus approaching Satan in, in an aggressive manner. Right, right. He actually very calmly, but very confidently just declares the word of the Lord. Mm. And, and there's, and what we do this whole thing where it's like, I'm going to, it's like, we're like conquistadors, you know, yeah. it's like, we're going to go take, take the mountain for God, or we're going to, let's go and, and we're going to cut off the head of the, the serpent where, we're the head, not the tail. And we, there's like a lot of this, like this thing that rises up inside of us. And that's, that's true, <laughs> right? There is so much truth to that. Yeah. Right. And, and we can never diminish our posture of victory, yep. right? I'm, I gotta make sure. I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting into my sermon on Sunday. We can, <laughs> we can't diminish our posture as victors. the The battle has already won, right? We have yeah. to look at this in our four dimensional accordion. The battle has already won. It was won on the cross. It was won when Jesus rose again. It was won the day I got saved. It was won when I went through that horrible season and came out victorious. It was won when I finished my deliverance session. It is. It will be won with my children. Yes. And it's going to be won when Jesus comes back. Like mm -hmm. the battle has, we already know the end, but there's a place of, of victory that we must stand that does not induce in us like a bloodthirst. Yeah, it's true. And and I think that when we start to posture ourselves in that way, where it's like, oh, oh we're just going to go get, we're going to go take the, the devil down. We're going to go into Salem and we're going to just like rip all those demons heads off. I honestly think it's like the enemy starts to like drool over that. Yeah, I because agree. Because what happens is there's a pride that actually mm -hmm. rises up inside of mm -hmm. us and the enemy's going, yeah, come I and get use me. That. Yep. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Aren't you so mad at me? Don't you want to rip me to shreds? And it's like, there's a thing. There's like, and there's like an overconfidence that starts to rise mm. up inside of us where it's like, and it goes beyond like Jesus's victory came from a place of humility. Yeah. And submission and surrender to the yes, Father, the will yes. of the Father. But yet we want to like brand, we want to take our swords and rush into battle and just start like slaying everything. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the whole dragon slayer mentality. And it's like, no, like Jesus never rushed into battle to, to, to kill one demon. Everyone who was demon possessed that needed freedom came to him. And he just confidently spoke to them. Yeah. You know, it, there's, there's such a different posture. I think that the Lord is trying to bring us to in this matter. And when the turning the swords into plowshares, immediately we want to go to like, well, there's a sword of the spirit and the, an armor of God, right? In Ephesians six. <laughs> right. And it's like, well, if again, this comes down to a little bit of the ignorant factor, sorry guys, I don't mean to offend you, but we need to understand what that means. Yeah. Like the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God is the spoken word. Yes. It means that he will give you like a prophetic edge mm. to be able to speak into situations, to be able to speak toward, yeah. you know, into the lives of people who are demon possessed or whatever. And there's an edge that cuts That's there, it. the, 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 the edge that cuts not, not just the written word, but the spoken word that, that, um, that will cut between soul and spirit, like revelation, like yeah. prophetic utterance, you know, like, like, and, and, but we, we run around like, again, like we're like, and like we're on, um, God ordained jihad. I know. You know, and it's like I think the Lord is trying to shift our so posture good. in warfare mm -hmm. to to contend for the things of heaven and to posture ourselves to actually bring in the harvest. And it's like let your sword be turned into a plowshare so you can stop chopping people's heads off and 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 wounding the body of Christ. Mm. And instead focus on my heart, which is actually to see captives come in yeah. and set free. Yeah. And you think you're doing this work for me, but you're actually like cutting people down instead of bringing them in. Mm -hmm. And, and we're so quick to condemn the world. But even Jesus was like, you can't condemn the world. 
you can't even be surprised when they sin because they're sinners. Yeah. Don't condemn the world, right? No, we're supposed to be bringing them in, but we use our weapons of I warfare know. to cut the world instead of the. I mean, out of all the weapons of of the armor, like they're they're all defensive, except for the sword of the spirit and and the javelin or the spear, which is actually in that Ephesians six doesn't even mention it as a javelin or a spear, but the last line in the weapons of warfare says and your prayers of intercession. Mm-hmm. Which that is your spear, yeah. Because you, you're you throw it, it. Yep. you send it out, yep. and like, <clears throat> and so, and and it just, I think that like, there's a shift. The Lord is trying to shift our posture on this. Well, I really love it. I think that's an excellent point you're bringing up, and I even think about Pastor Zach's illustrative posture on Sunday, going from standing to mm-hmm. his knees, mm-hmm. and to it's this part right here in Isaiah two verse ten: Enter the rock and hide in the dust. Yeah, this place where you know, even positionally, Ephesians six, the whole context there is not fighting and engaging in battle it's yep. standing i know it's standing Don't and steal my sermon. I, okay i'm sorry <laughs> i'm just kidding see this is so know. cool you no i have know. no idea <laughs> it's just but it's just so cool because yeah. the posture is okay i love what you're bringing up here that yeah. god is actually the ones but what what do we have to do we have to submit the sword in this case it's not the sword of the spirit yeah. that's the word of god which yeah. we're going to use yeah but we're going to submit this sword, which we've been wielding for warfare, uh-huh. for the Lord through his heat of the Holy Spirit, yep. the refiner's fire, and the hammer to actually be turned into a plowshare, which looks, to, as you're talking, the images that I have, and I think about the, the seed and what Pastor Zach was illustrating on Sunday, I keep seeing us as going out and scattering seed, going out and sowing seed, going out and actually reaching over. Like you talked quickly, you mentioned Salem, and that was one of the most powerful things we saw uh, in our time and in our times in Salem is just going out with love. We've talked to Pastor Rob and he's like, man, everybody comes in here with a bully pulpit to try to come at the Satanists and come at the witches. And it's like, nobody's talking to them. Yep. You know, we had some Jehovah's Witnesses show up at the door on Saturday and it was just, I was just, I wanted to go out and get some coffee. I was in my, my PJs and, and, you know, slippers and everything. (laughs) And I stopped and I'm like, oh, wow. I began to dialogue and they actually thanked me for having a dialogue, you know, and we can get into all that. But, but I mean, the whole point is God was communicating his love Mm -hmm. just simply because I'm not on a war path. We're not on a war path. We are ambassadors of the kingdom, but it's ambassadors of his love. We're, we're, we're beseeching you on behalf of the father, come and be reconciled to God. But like you said, we've kind of determined which groups are acceptable to come to that place of reconciliation or not. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we want to go out into the streets and and love on the uh, the heroin addict who's in the gutter and a Jehovah's Witness comes to our door and we treat him as hostile. I know. Right? And it's like, and so that's my same experiences with any Jehovah's Witness. My my grandmother was a born again. She, she was Jehovah's Witness and she got saved. Wow. And so she had like an anointing to minister to Jehovah's Witnesses. And and I remember her just saying, you just, you have to show them love yeah. and you have to, you have to teach them the word of God. Yeah. Because they don't learn the word of God. They learn some scriptures yeah. that are used as like the the bait yep. to bring someone in. They use some truth yep. to bring someone in to a false religion. Yeah. And uh and so they and so they they're misappropriating truth. And so she goes, if you just speak the truth to them, they're actually hungry for it. And so I would actually just start like well, what is, did, what, what is it? Um, you know, also in Matthew, it, have you read where it says this and this and this? And like, what? And so I would use some of their scriptures yeah. and I would like tag off of it yep. and start bringing more revelation of yes. Jesus through it. And and they're like, they, they always like, thank you so much. For yes. That. I actually never even realized that before. I never even heard that before. And so they, and they'll come back again and say, hey, can we talk more? And they're not even trying to convert me. They're actually coming because they're hungry for truth. This is exactly <laughs> what happened. See, this is the whole point, Pastor John, is that we're, we're kind of looking offensively, mm-hmm. right? But uh, this is the whole philosophy is like, wait a minute, you know, Halloween's coming up. People, what about people showing up at my door? Yeah. What am I doing? And again, I don't want to just put don't that out there. Don't give them a track. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I know. This is so interesting. But we have the light and the love of Christ inside of us. Yeah. And if we think about coming off of that offense and that antagonistic, and we start looking at, okay, this is the way 
that a sword is beaten into a plowshare with the Holy Spirit. And I will say, it's so interesting what you're saying, because the women were looking at me like, like the daughters would look up at a father. And I was realizing the Holy Spirit was giving me revelation. They're seeing me. This is what the Lord said. They're seeing the light of Christ through your eyes. Yeah. They're seeing me. Mm -hmm. Just keep stepping out. Just keep talking. This is how we're engaging now. So I love what you're bringing us to of the whole point of, okay, everything is getting transitioned here from this place where we think we're on the offense trying to protect. Yeah. And now it's yeah. like we're going out and reaping. Yeah. And again, I, we do have to shift the, our mindset that um, our weapons of offense are not the same as we thought, mm -hmm. you know? And so, um, and so, uh, and I always tell people one of the greatest weapons of spiritual warfare you could ever wield is peace, mm. especially because our world, there's so much chaos. Yes. Right. And so, I mean, each part of the armor is vital and is very important, but especially when you, when you're a Christian living or working in the world, like, you know, we're here. You and I are here all the time. So yeah. we have the benefit of having to deal with, you know, Christians that have hell in them. But um, but when you're a Christian going into a place where right. there's a lot of hell, right. Um, yes, the 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 truth, the belt of truth is so important. Like that's the written word of God. It actually holds every piece of the armor together. Mm. And and to have the the breastplate of righteousness, right, and the helmet of salvation, and the shield of faith, and and you know the uh, you know the 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 sandals of peace, or you know, but it's they go from the your knee all the way down to your feet. There's yeah. like a brass or like bronze covering of your leg, right, and um and so your body is covered, right, with this armor, but it's to withstand the attack of the enemy. It's not to go out, yeah, and it's like when like I I played soccer for from when I was four years old until I graduated high school. And wow. um, the only reason why I never continued playing is because I knew the Lord had called me into ministry. So I was just like, I just let it die, you know, like whatever. It was fun while it lasted mm -hmm. 14 and a half years, year round, wow. you know, and it was awesome. And I loved it. Um, but like shin guards for a soccer player are not a weapon of offense. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking that <laughs> you yeah. wear your shin guards to defend mm. your leg from being injured. Because there's a lot of battle taking place at a low level. Whoa. And so, and, and there's, and you're the way you're going through a battle that your feet are actually leading the way. And so, and when you go out into the world, when you leave church on a Sunday and go to work on Monday, your feet are actually what bring you into that place. And there's a lot of stuff that you can encounter at a low level. Yeah. And, and it'll protect your legs because if you can cut someone's leg off, they, where, what are they going to do to fight? Yeah. They're going to have to, they're trying to balance themselves on one leg mm -hmm. and they can't run into battle. Yeah, that's true. Right. So you're, you're protecting that, but it's amazing that they're described as like the shoes or the sandals of peace. peace. I know. Like that is not like, a uh, 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 an adjective you use <laughs> when you're going into war. I know. Because, because peace in the kingdom, it's upside down. So peace actually wages war against chaos mm -hmm. just by being peace yeah because it's it's counter what the enemy is trying to produce mm -hmm. so if you can go in somewhere bringing peace and so going back to pastor zach's message like you start looking at this stuff and it's like man like that posture of humility yeah it's so powerful it is like your feet are what you stand on mm -hmm. and and humility is the bedrock of every powerful um, uh, um, gift of the spirit yeah. that that dispels darkness. Mm. It has to come from a place of humility. It's like to go low is to go high, mm. you know, in the kingdom. And so, and so, part of finding that place of humility in is stoking that fire. Yeah, it's getting before the Lord and saying, "Lord, I need you more today than I needed you yesterday." Yes, yeah, true. It's like I need you more. I need you more, M more, more of you, less of me. Mm. Like we have to be in that posture. I must decrease and you must increase. Like the Lord, is there any other places in my heart that need to be circumcised? And it's like, that makes room yeah. for the Lord to come and fill that with a hunger for more of him, for his word. And it's from that posture, from that place that like this fire is stoked. And those things that we've been using to try to like rip apart the world or the the enemy, they end up turning into 
a, a plowshare. It's not something you don't have to be the one that necessarily is transforming that sword. That's right. That's the, right. The fire does the work. And the, the, the word, the written word of God is actually where the hammering is brought. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a scripture and I, I brought it up. I bring it up in my, um, in my tabernacle class when I'm talking about the, the, uh, the lampstand. Yeah. And the lampstand was in, in modern day equivalent. It was 75 pounds of pure gold. Wow. Hammered all out of one piece. And, and sorry, I don't have the note in front of me right now, but it's, uh, I think it might be in Matthew or Mark. There's a line that says, um, you need to be wrought of God. Like the, the children of God are those who are wrought of God. Wow. And you think about that word wrought and immediately you think of wrought iron. Mm. Like it's iron that is melted down and hammered and beat into a particular function and shape. Wow. Right. And so that's what they did with the, the lampstand was that they melted, they start, they softened the gold and they beat it and they hammered it and formed the function of that lampstand by hammering it out. Wow. They melted it down and they hammered it out. And this is exactly what is, he's talking about in this passage. Mm. Like when you allow the fire of God to melt you down, his word will actually hammer out in you your function and your shape so that you can be actually used by God in the, in, in the manner that he's called you to. It's just like, it's like a really powerful and he, Pastor Zach even did the, like the ding, yeah, yeah. ding, <laughs> ding. It's like, he's melting, he's yes. forging his body. Yes. And, and I always, is, uh, I always like to say this. I don't even, I said it one day and I can't remember if it was prayer or if it was a, one of the, an email I sent out, but I remember writing it out and I laughed because I thought it was really funny. And I've been saying it ever since. Um, the Lord has called us to be tools in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> Right? <laughs> yes. And and so you're a tool in the hand of God. But if you're not in God's hands, you're just, you're a, just tool. a tool. <laughs> Don't be a tool. <laughs> and so, but that's that's legit. Yeah. Like he he wants to hammer us out and 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 form us and shape us to be used by him. And all every single one of us that like, gets hammered out, we may have different functions. But we all have the same markings in us. That's right. That when you, someone looks at that tool and they see Jesus in it, mm -hmm. it's like the seal. Yeah. It's like it's like oh, who made this tool? Oh, look it. it here's the brand. They were branded Ephesians two we're, uh, one. We're branded, sealed yep. with His mark, which is the Holy Spirit. That's it. That's and it. it's like, it, so, I mean, it, literally it's like it, 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 this, this message reverberates all through scripture I know about humbling ourselves to be hammered out, to be wrought by God, um, to, to be, to be molded and shaped for his purposes and his plans. And it was never to go chop heads off. Mm -mm. It was always to reconcile and redeem. Well, the one final thing I, w I want you to pray for us and pray into this today as we go. But the one final thing I wanted to share that I just can't get past is is in verse two, that the mountain of the Lord's house yeah. shall be established on the top of mountains. And I just keep seeing everything that you just communicated about going low. If we have areas of our life where we want to see God exalted and we keep trying to make that happen or we keep pleading, it is in that place of humility and asking the right questions. Lord, is there anything else in mm -hmm. me that yeah. needs to be cleaned out? or circumcised in that posture is where the mountain of God is able to be established above all others in your life. Those different things that have been elevating above the Lord, like our pastor was talking about, Hey, we just come into church. We do the church thing. And then we're right back to the world, all these different mountains mm -hmm. in our lives. And yet in our hearts cry is to have the mountain of God exalted above all others. Yeah. But it is that place of Lord, search me and find me, test me and try me. Yeah. So I would love for you just to pray into that right now and pray yeah. over us. Yeah, yeah. Lord God, I thank you so much for what you're doing in our church, Lord. And um, God, we repent mm. and we ask for your forgiveness, Lord God, for every time that we tried to do you a favor and, <laughs> and in our flesh, we, um, we try to exalt uh, ourselves as the representation of your mountain. We try to even sometimes subconsciously we exalt his mm. providence church and say, this is what God is doing. This is where he's moving. This is what it's all about, Lord. And we put ourselves yeah. in that place when it's supposed to be you, yes, Lord. Lord. You're, and and I just, I, I'm thinking back to that moment where Jesus was hanging on the cross and there's this line that says, if I be exalted, 
I draw all men unto me. And that day on that mountain, he was raised up. Mm. He was elevated above all people from a place of humility, a place he was actually being humiliated and persecuted and he was being beaten and, 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 and the blood is just pouring out. He was unrecognizable Lord, but you father, you exalted your son above all men. And that posture from that place, from the, from the supernatural work that was accomplished on that cross, God, you are drawing the world unto you Mm. because of what happened there, Lord God. And so forgive us for every time we've tried to put ourselves on that cross to draw men to you because your son already did it. Yes, Lord. But he didn't stay there. He rose again. And now he is exalted and sitting at mm-hmm. your right hand. Yes. God, above all people, that the earth is his footstool, God. So forgive us for every time we've exalted ourselves to that place. Even though your word says that we're sitting in heavenly places with him, that throne does not belong to us. It is mm. his throne that we partake in, God. And so we are humbled and we're honored to even be invited into this, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so, God, we repent of every time we've tried to exalt ourselves. God, we ask for your forgiveness and we repent for every time that we've chopped people's heads off or mm. we've chopped people's arms off, God, other believers, because there was doctrines or things that we didn't agree on. And so we, we maim them with a sword to try to prove that we're right and that we're wrong only to hinder the work of the body of Christ because yeah. now there is a wounded body part God, forgive us. Mm. And Lord God, we submit and surrender ourselves to you. God, I pray that in that you would that, that you would um burn in us, God. God, we surrender and submit ourselves to the fire of your spirit and say, Lord, come and do what it is that only you can do in us. Yes. Lord, we surrender ourselves. We submit every area of our heart that needs to be beat out. Mm. Every area of our heart that needs to be burned away, Lord God. And that you would that you would um, come in, and that you would modify us to be more like you. That you would mold us. That you would shape us. That you would beat out the areas of us that need to be more like you. That is uh, that brings reconciliation to this world. That brings reconciliation to to the Jewish people, to Israel, God, your people that you sent your son through, God, that it would reconcile them to you, yes, God, that, it would re- that we would be reconciled to one another, that these swords that we've been using to fight other people and to even go after the enemy, God, that they would um, be used, Lord God, to actually draw others into you. Your word says it's your kindness yeah. that leads us to repentance. Not, not your, not your war cry. Mm-hmm. It's your kindness, yes, God, Lord. that we would emulate that, Lord. So, Lord, we, we partner with your spirit to stoke that fire. We breathe on that fire as you breathe on that fire in us, Lord God. And we say, Lord, come and make us more like you, that we would be able to um, accurately represent your kingdom, that others would see us and they would see Jesus. Yes. Who reflects himself even to you, Lord, and that, that, that your will would be done in us, that your, your hearts cry to redeem your creation would come through us, not from a place of antagonistic fighting, but a place of humble, um, loving and serving this world. And that would draw all men unto you because you are being exalted in us and it would draw men unto you. And so we love you. We thank you for what you're doing here. God, we say, come and have your way. Mm. Let your will be done in HPC, in my heart, as it is in heaven. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor John, thanks so much for joining me today. Come on, it was a pleasure. It was awesome. (laughs) Hey, that's The Breakdown. We'll catch you next week. See ya.